Good afternoon and welcome to Cole's Backyard Coop. I'm dedicating this video to gardening. Uh, if you're a gardening enthusiast like I am, I wanted to bring you a spring update on what we've put in the ground for spring, summer, and uh, show you what we've been up to. So this bed my husband built specifically for watermelons, pumpkins, and spaghetti squash. It's a 12 by 12 bed. We filled it full of rich dirt that we got from uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those places. Um, you can find two cubic foot bags of dirt that you can fill your uh, garden bed with. And that it took us about 30 bags of uh, good garden soil. We did use a little bit of topsoil as well because you want good drainage. But the garden soil is the main component because that's that rich dirt that you want to grow your vegetables in. We use the miracle Grow brand because it's a really good product and uh, it doesn't need any additional fertilizers or anything like that. So you kind of keep everything nice and organic. So this first two rows right here is the watermelon. It's coming up pretty good already. Excited to see how big the melons will grow. What we will do in between the rows that we made, we will fill with hay or straw because you want your melons to rest on something other than the dirt so it doesn't let the bottom of the, uh, the fruit uh, start rotting when it rains and uh, it stays wet. This middle two rows are the pumpkins. So it's a variety of pumpkins, your smaller uh, tabletop pumpkins, the ones that stay green, the ones that are different colors like with the stripes. And then I also planted the large carving pumpkins, the big orange ones that you uh, use for carving, put by your door, all of that. And then the last two rows is my spaghetti squash. So all of these items we will eat and uh, give to the chickens because they love all this stuff too. So what we don't consume will go to them. On the end of the garden right here is Vidalia onions. So we put in some onions on either side of the bed. So this is our spring bed for those uh, vegetables that we just spoke about and fruits, watermelon as well. So let's go over and look at what we have in the raised garden beds. My blue salvia is in full bloom right now. It is so beautiful and bees and butterflies are buzzing around it. And uh, you can see them there. It's absolutely beautiful. I love spring flowers, but they last through the summer as well. So you can't go wrong with blue salvia. And then around the uh, bird feeder, I've got all kinds of flowers as well. Some wildflowers coming up too that I threw down and they're popping up now. So everything is coming up in spring and loving this warmer weather. It's a beautiful day today and mild temperatures. So I thought it was a great day to make a video. Here is kale. So this is called curly kale. This is the older adult plant. I'm getting ready to rip that out and then I'll plant more. These plants I did get started um, already, not from seeds because it, it, they just mature faster. It's hard to grow everything from seeds. So that's kale. I harvested quite a bit of kale. This is from last fall, from last November. And it's given me a lot of leaves of kale. So that's about how big they get. And then they're, they're kind of spent. You can see how it's kind of wilting back. So I'll rip that out and start with a bunch of baby plants over the summer. These two bins here are okra. So you can see the baby okra is coming up. I love okra, especially pickling okra. It's really yummy. So that's okra as well. So we have two bins of okra. And then over here is your green zucchini. I love green zucchini, so do the chickens. So it'll be for us and for them. And some more of the Vidalia onions growing on the ends there. Um, strawberries are done for the year. Uh, I um, had a good harvest of strawberries over winter. So you'll see that there's still a few little blooms that are coming in that are growing, but um, it, it's not anything significant. So the main harvest of strawberries is gonna be over winter. 
And then your plants will just grow and stay green over summer. And then this fall, they will produce again. Here I have cucumbers. I had to think for a second. Uh, these are cucumbers. I did really good with cucumbers last summer. So these will uh, vine and trail up the A-frame. So the A-frame I got through uh, Lowe's.com. That's really good to have an A-frame so that they can kind of be off the ground so your cucumbers stay clean and don't turn kind of yellowish on the bottom from sitting on the ground. My leafy greens, which is uh, romaine and uh, Swiss chard is kind of done now that it's starting to get warmer. So it'll go to flower. Cue the rooster. Thanks, Stetson. Uh, it'll go to flower. So I let it flower because uh, the bees and butterflies and things love that. So once it gets done flowering, then I just pull it up. And I'm going to put another bin of cucumbers here. So I have some wonderful tomatoes over here. These are called early girl tomatoes. So they get a decent size medium-sized tomato. I've got uh, some young plants here on the sides and then the bigger ones in the middle that I kept covered through winter so they made it. So we love tomatoes and then I give them to the chickens as well. So I try to plant things that are good for us and save me money on buying for the chickens. I know Stetson, keep on. Over here let's talk about our berry garden. So I'm going to frame it off. I told my husband I wanted to put wooden frame around it um, just to kind of give it some definition and hold in the pine bark mulch. This is blackberry. First time having blackberries, but it, they're blooming really good. They almost resemble to me um, strawberries when they bloom. So they get the flower and then the center is the berry itself. So that little centered green part, and they are fragrant actually. I smell them. So I have two blackberry bushes that are coming. This one's flowering as well, getting a lot of green after they uh, lost their leaves over winter. And then I have two raspberry plants as well. So this one has got a lot more green on it than this one so far, but they should grow. If they, if they vine, then I will put a trellis behind this one and um, these are the blue the blackberries over here and the raspberries I'll put a trellis behind them now look at these blueberries I mean they are doing so good this is their first spring with us I planted these plants uh, last winter yeah so November December ish look at those clusters of blueberries aren't they gorgeous so I've got blueberries on all the plants and they flowered really pretty that's what the flowers look like and then those uh, turn into the berries those are little tiny baby berries but then they gradually get bigger and then look at these these are almost starting to turn blue so I'll harvest them once they turn blue so yeah and I planted different varieties it recommends so that they cross pollinate and I had a lot of bees pollinating on these. So that was really exciting to have a good harvest of blueberries first time out on these bushes with me. So I'm super excited about that. Now this is what I'm really excited about. So these are my apple trees I planted last year after we moved here. And I've got baby apples. Aren't they cute? 35 between both trees. I wasn't sure if I would get fruit off of them the first year that they were, first spring that they're with me, but they're producing. So I'm super excited. These are called an Anna's apple tree. So they're, the apples will get to about the size of a gala. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, last month in March, the trees were covered with flowers, which is what in turn turns into the fruit. And these are edible apples. And it's like a gala, about the same taste and size. And I'm super excited. So at the, as these trees mature year over year, they should produce a lot more. This one didn't produce as many apples as that other tree over there but they almost look pear-shaped right now. They're not quite apple-y round yet, but they'll get there. 
they will mature probably in another two to three months. They're growing very quickly. Every time I come out here to look at them, they are getting huge. So I'm super excited about that. So the only other thing I've got out here, these are peach trees, which are not doing anything yet. Oh, I spoke too soon. My peach tree's finally waking up. I thought they were dead. Okay, so maybe I'll have peaches, but I planted two peach trees and so far I hadn't seen anything out of them. So we'll have to get back to you on that. I planted a red maple right there. Cause I wanted a big shade tree right there and maples are pretty in autumn and in spring. So I planted a red maple there that's waking up after winter very nicely. And we'll go back this way and uh, head back to a few flowers. I've got the two front beds that if you watched my winter video, you saw that I had planted them with snapdragons. Snapdragons are still holding in really well until it gets too hot, like 85 to 90 degree continuous hot temperature, then they'll wilt back. But for now, I pulled um, a couple of the snapdragons and put them in my center bed and planted some uh, blue salvia because the blue salvia is just a nice pop of color and attracts lots of pollinators. So that looks really good. So this bed and this bed is the snapdragons and the uh, blue salvia. Blue salvia, guys, you can never go wrong with it. Look at the bees. I love bees. I love attracting pollinators. It's just great. And I've been attracting hummingbirds. So last stop, guys, I'll come up here to um, my center bed. Just to give you a quick update on that. The center flower bed, I, it's getting really lush and pretty. Everything is kind of mixing together. This is what the... Um, hummingbirds love a lot. It's called uh, scarlet sage salvia and then you've got your blue salvia but it seems to be drawn to the red is what I've heard on um, or what I've read online. So yeah so all of these see I've got some of my um, snapdragons here that I brought over from those beds over there and then society garlic. Always love society garlic. And these are all cold hardy plants too. Everything that's here is cold hardy. So if they last through the summer, they can stay till the winter. Pansies typically don't last through the summer. So they usually will die off. As you can see, they're getting a little yellow. The hotter it gets, the more yellow. So you'll scrap those and plant something else that'll make it. I may put more uh, society garlic because that's cold hardy. So I've tend to plant cold hardy things that are summer hardy and cold hardy now that we're living in a place where it gets pretty chilly in the winter for us by florida standards um but yeah guys that's the latest update hope you enjoyed it uh, i love my flowers and we're really excited about the garden and what we're trying to grow and having some success with it so if you feel you want to ask a question leave a comment go ahead and do that in the comment section uh, mash the like button if you did. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do if you like the information I brought you on chickens and gardening and all the fun stuff. And I uh, hope everyone is doing well out there. I can't believe it's mid-April already. Moving right along in this year. Uh, next video will be back to chickens. I'm going to do a video about the rooster. What I like and what I don't like. So for now, guys, from Cole's Backyard Coop, happy gardening, and as always, happy chicken keeping.